Hi everyone. There are just a few hours left to Hanukkah, and last night some of us had what might be considered a bonfire wherever we lit candles. But you might not know that there's a debate in the Talmud between how we light candles. Do we begin, as Beit Shammai suggests, with eight candles and decrease the number down to one with every succeeding night, or do we begin with one candle and increase until eight with every succeeding night? Beit Shammai believes that we decrease for a number of reasons, one of them being that similar to the holiday of Sukkot, when we would offer sacrifices every day, there would be one less sacrifice available. And if you uh, listen to the story of the miracle of the oil, every night there was one less amount of the oil left. And so it would make sense that there would be less light with every succeeding night. Logically, Beit Shammai works. If you follow Beit Hillel's approach, which is actually the predominant majority of the Jewish community today, um, we light one candle and then two candles and then three until eight because we believe that light ascends. We have more light every night and once you go up in holiness, you don't go down. There are just a few hours left of Hanukkah. What an unbelievable moment to think about what it is to increase in holiness and light and never to decrease. What is that light that we light? What do you see in a candle when you look close enough to see its flicker and the differences between the blue fire and the white fire and the red and orange fire? What do you see in that light? What is the holiness that you've gained enough from that you can extend even further? Because we might not light nine candles tonight, but once you've lit, once you've become illuminated, what comes next? So I want to reflect on one of my teachers, Rabbi Craig Sheff, who in an essay in a book that we produced together called To Banish Darkness, he recounts the teaching that actually the miracle is not that someone lit a candle and it lasted for eight, even though it was supposed to last one. The miracle is that someone thought, let's light a candle even though it might not last. Let's give everything we've got to extend the holiness and the light in this world, even though we can't tell in advance that this is going to work. We didn't know there was going to be a miracle. We don't depend on miracles. Ein samchim alanes, as we say in Hebrew and in Aramaic. But if you feel faith in a world that can be despite the world that is, or maybe surpassing the world that is, you learn, as Don Miguel Ruiz says in a very, very famous book, The Four Agreements, everything is made of light. He recognized in this vision, the character does, realizes that stars don't create light, light creates stars. And we are made of light. Look what we could do. Look at the heavens and look what we've done. You want to see the miracle of Hanukkah? Look in your own eyes and in the eyes of someone else who can live an inspired life in the face of reality. And may we, may you and I, during these few hours left of Hanukkah, take in all that light so that we can even pour it out and create stars together. Stars that one day our children's children's children will look at and remember that they are made of light too. Because despite the world, there's a world, despite all the mistakes that we make and the scarcity we feel, if we can be brave for a moment and dream about a world that hasn't yet come into being so that our children's children's children will themselves realize the light from which they were made and know that it's never really lost. We pour it out we take it in, we pour it out again. May our children be blessed by the way our eyes remember to see. And may Hanukkah's glow last far beyond the ritual of lighting candles so that we can be lights in the world too. Chag Sameach, everyone.